Hey, my Coffee with Brenna friends, grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. New mug, sort of new Bible. I'm going to explain the Bible first. I think I've used this in a Coffee with Brenna before, like a long time ago. This is one of my senior pastor's Bibles. And a couple weeks ago in staff meeting, I grabbed it off the shelf. So my, my senior pastor of my church, one, he's retiring in less than three months. Two, he owns like 15,000 books and he keeps some of them at church. I wonder how many are actually at church. But a couple years ago, actually, I was preaching on Isaiah 49. I remember first time preaching at my church. And this is a study Bible. Anyway, a couple weeks ago in staff meeting, I grabbed this Bible off the shelf. My Bible, as you've seen before, the one I'm reading currently is really falling apart and they had made fun of me and stuff meaning they're like you know you can get that rebound and stuff and I'm like I like the duct tape uh another funny story about that my first bible study leader came to the service last week where I was commissioned and that's the bible I always read in bible study and that we studied together and so I said oh look at the bible I'm reading there's some things that you could share with people that you have a long history with and they're just extra special, meaningful. I mean, I show you guys the Bible and you're like, that's nice, Brenna. You clearly read that thing. But to her, it's like, ah, oh, we, we memorized Ephesians 1 from that Bible together and other things. So I pulled this off the shelf and I told him, I really like this Bible. And he comes up and he looks at it and he goes, I can't read the print that small anymore. You can have it. So isn't that nice? Now I have this Bible and I can I can't read it without my glasses on at all, but I can read it with the glasses on. And then my mug. If you didn't watch last week's video, you might just get go watch it, get a kick out of it because I went to the wrong church. I can't tell you the whole story right now. But they gave me this mug and this is what I'm going to talk about today. Apparently this phrase on the mug is something the pastor says all the time. He said it several times when he was teaching from the Bible last week and I didn't actually open the mug right away because I had left it in its little box thinking maybe it would probably travel better that way since I had to pack it in my suitcase, is what you're living for worth Jesus dying for? I think that might come up backwards on the video. But anyway, I don't know why I have it mirrored. Maybe I should fix that. I did a little Instagram reel about that last week after I did open the mug. I wanted to show you something else, but I think I recycled it. My bag. First of all, when you go to these things, they give you a lot of stuff. They gave me a canvas bag, a duffel bag that had two water bottles in it and chocolate in it. They gave me chocolate. They they gave some other stuff too that I couldn't eat and I just left it like out so other people could take it. They gave me a baton. Look out, people. I'm responsible. Anyway, my suitcase wasn't like packed to the brim when I came here because I knew I'd be getting some things. But it was not empty. And wow, I could barely shut that suitcase last Friday morning. And then I got a note in there saying that the TSA opened it. And I'm thinking, those poor people. Nothing looked like it was moved because I travel with a small blanket. <laughs> you guys, I'm, I'm, as the kids today would say, I am extra I don't like the bleach smell on the blankets in the hotel. So I bring my own blanket and put it around my head. I'm sure you've actually seen pictures of it. Wow, I've already been recording for five minutes and I'm sure I'm going to cut a little bit of that out, but I got to get to the point here. But anyway, the blanket is the last thing I put in. I had already zipped up one side, zipped on the inside. And then on the other side, there's like a clip, you know, like a, like a clip. There's stretchy things in a clip. So they couldn't have moved too much because the blanket was still exactly where they were, but they tucked the little... TSA, you know, we have searched your bag. <laughs> well, go for it. I don't know what they saw in there. I definitely had some protein powder in there and I wondered because it's in a baggie <laughs> if that was going to get flagged. It didn't get flagged on the way there. And there was barely any protein powder left in there, but waste not, want not, whatever. I didn't want to throw it away. So, Adventures in the Life of Brenna. So today we're talking about is what you're living for worth Jesus dying for? So I couldn't help but think of a certain scripture, which I know I've spoken about before. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. 
that's not exactly what it says. I'll quote it properly in a minute. But the interesting thing is, so when you look for a scripture like that, it gives you just the verse. And then I'm like, well, let me, so the verse is, oh boy, that I can't see, 25. Yeah, Matthew 16, verse 25. So I will change it to like Matthew 16, 23 through 25. First, actually, I did 24 through 26. I, I knew what 20, I knew what they were. I had a general idea, at least. I know the next verse is about forfeiting your soul. But the interesting thing is, as I went back further, I was like, oh, I forgot that that is the context of this. So verse 21, from that time on, we're more than halfway through the book of Matthew, by the way. Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. It's funny, I can read the scriptures <laughs> without my glasses, but I can't read the numbers very well. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. I know I've talked about that verse a bunch, especially in the series on the power of our thoughts. So Jesus is talking about how he has to die, how he has to lose his life and then be raised to life. And Peter's like, no way, Jesus. I'm not going to let that happen to you. Now, we know that, you know, there's, well, first of all, it was God's will to crush Jesus, it says. I'm pretty sure that's Isaiah 53 and cause him to suffer. Suffering servant passage. Peter did not rise to that occasion. Though he did cut off the soldier's ear, right? At least in, what, John's account? Anyway, all that said, I don't want you to go, Jesus. So in that context... Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. And then he turns to the disciples and he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the son of man is going to come in his father's glory with his angels and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Okay, so much to unpack in that passage. But let's ask the question again. Is what you're living for worth Jesus dying for? Is what you're living for worth Jesus dying for? What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? And now I want to ask you the flip question. Well, I don't know if it's a flip question, but I want to ask you another question to come at it at a different angle. Are there things I need to let go of in order to fully live for Jesus, in order to fully live in a way that it was worth him dying? Now, I understand this. Jesus would have died because he needed to die for your sins and he wanted to be in a relationship with you and God wanted a bigger family, right? He gave his only begotten son so that we could be adopted as his sons and daughters. But of course, there's more to it than that. I don't mean there's more to being saved. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But we we're also supposed to follow Jesus with our whole lives, our whole selves, not just part. So is there something you need to deny, you need to cast aside, you need to push away in order to take up your cross and follow Jesus today? Is what you're living for worth Jesus dying for? I'm going to see if there's a setting. I think there's a setting in the editing program I use that unflips it. So I'm going to see if I can actually, so you guys can see. Holy Rock Church. Very, very grateful I was able to go there. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. One of them, another transition says, for me and the gospel, Jesus says. That is my question for you today. Is what you're living for worth Jesus dying for? Are your eyes fixed on him primarily or something else? It doesn't mean, obviously, we also have jobs, we have things we have to do. But 
is he the first thing we seek? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for this divine encounter with this little church last week when I meant to go to a different church, and you can hear about that in my coffee with Brenna. <laughs> but the question that I've then been thinking about since then, and I pray that all of my coffee with Brenna friends would ask themselves this question today, is what I'm living for worth Jesus dying for? Am I living for my circumstances to change? Am I living for my marriage to improve? Am I living for my children to come back to the Lord? Am I living for a higher salary? Am I living for peace? Or am I living for Jesus? Am I seeking first the kingdom of God and his and your righteousness? Am I willing to lose my life and the things that I think make a good life for the sake of gaining Christ? To live is Christ. We thank you. Holy Spirit, guide us into all truth as we ask these important questions. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, my Coffee with Brenna friends. As I said, I did write a song, What Am I Living For?, inspired by the death of Richard Wormbrand. You can look him up. That's W-U-R-M brand. Richard Wormbrand, he founded the, an organization called The Voice of the Martyrs. And I'll link the song in the show notes. Seriously ponder this question this week. And I love to hear from you. I'm glad you liked my unedited video last week. Just on the fly. Though I try and do as little editing as possible. But I'm glad you're here. So... Till next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.